My name is Joseph, and um, I actually had my first job when I moved to the UK, working right here. Uh, so it's really good to have my first uh, conference talk, also coming back to Manchester United Stadium. And I chose to do my MSc because I was supporting, I was supporting Manchester United. <laughs> right, uh, so today we'll be talking about security education programs. Um, when I left Manchester, I went and worked with Ticketmaster until about four months ago. Uh, working at Ticketmaster was really fun. Uh, lots of tickets, got to travel the world because our office is based in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, but currently now, I'm working with Aviva, and I've been told to make sure I state that whatever I'm saying here today is not, what's, it's not an Aviva content. It's just a personal content, so caveat said. All right, uh, so security education programs. Uh, what's your take on it, and uh, how do you do it? Are you doing it right? Are you not doing it right? Uh, after the Ticketmaster story hit the tabs, uh, we did a lot of, I was quite lucky to be among the first people. I was actually among the two guys who went to sit with Monzo to discuss, hey guys, what's going on? I was like, nothing. You know, uh, at that time, I didn't know what Monzo was, uh, but you know, just lessons I've learned from there was more like, uh, what's your security program like? You know, what's your motivation for security? Is your security driven by compliance? Or is your compliance driven by security? It's like chicken and the egg. Security driven by compliance or compliance driven by security? It's like, fine, we need to be secure and we need to be compliant. So which one actually comes first? And how do you do it right? And uh, what actually works and how do you uh, cover all of that? I worked with PCI audits for quite some time and I kept you know, going from country to country trying to like evangelize why you need to do this, why you should uh, probably take some things off the chart. Right. Uh, so, 2019 and AWS is like uh, on top of their game, uh, lots of products coming out, Apple is on top there. There's a lot of innovation going on today. Uh, security is there to enable the business and not to hinder them. And uh, most times, the last time I went for a DevOps meetup and I was like, hey, I'm Joseph, I work in security. And they were like, oh, he's the security guy. <laughs> so uh, we're there to enable the business and we know that innovation is constantly moving forward at a very fast pace. And how fast is our education going? Very fast. <laughs> so like, how do you build your education to catch up with the speed of innovation of the business, right? Uh, most people answer that question by going into outsourcing or hiring, uh, but I'm here to tell you today that your best bet is actually to try also training your own people. I know different uh, there's no one size fits all when it comes to security education. So it's like pick something out from this talk and see what applies best to you and how best you want to use it. Right, uh, so on this chart, I've kind of like tried to break out uh, the enterprise into three or four different sections. So this Venn diagram, on this bit, on the big circular, it's like the rest of the world you know, your families, your stores, and the rest of it. And uh, outside here, I've kind of like listed, you know, entrants, individuals, front desk officers, your drivers. Those are people coming into the company. Your security education should be able to, or your security program, uh, so I would like to say that uh, your security program should encompass both security awareness, security training, and security education, that those three should be what forms uh, your security program, right? Uh, so your entrance, someone joins your company for the first time from day zero up to say about three years or you know about that where you can actually say they're learning the business, they're understanding the business. Do you, does your security program actually cover them from the first point of call from getting into the company? Do you train them from the first day go or do you wait until after three months or you just leave them to their manager to start, you know, they're quite experienced and stuff like that? So your security program should probably cover individuals. And uh, it should also go a step further to also provide content for your security team, uh, your developers, your technology guys, the professionals. They are all here, people who are actually doing you know, your admin, your AD staff, and all of that. And it, your security program should also cover the executive, the experts, people who are calling the shots. 
uh, your security program has to cover them because they are also uh, big targets, right? So you have to build your security program to encompass all that, and uh, the rest of this talk will be based out of this uh, set. Right, uh, so we move into the individual bit. Individuals are quite a big target, as you've seen from most of the talks today, emails, emails, emails. Uh, close to 90% of attacks start with emails, and it's just from a click of a button. Uh, you might have the best controls in place, but if you don't train those users to understand the difference between good and bad and not so good, you know, do not click, they might not really get it. So in your security program, uh, catering for individuals, you need to make sure that you maintain consistency. I've heard that you know, so many times today, and I'm like, oh gosh, did they see my slide? Uh, but it's like, you know, these problems are not unique to any one company or any one person, it's universal, right? So in training your, indivi your individuals or you know, new entrants in the organization, your target audience are usually like the non-technical staff, entry level, and uh, most of the security risks you find they are like, you know, Accidental disclosure, like you know, if you don't have a good bring your own device policy and they use their device for you don't have an MDM, sometimes there's a really thin gap between you know official things and uh, personal things. So in designing a security awareness program for them, uh, you need to like first off make sure you get their interest, right? Why should they be interested in learning this? Like. Uh, um, a salesperson, what's, what's security got to do with me? But you need to like, make them understand, get, get their interest, and get them engaged. And once you get them engaged, and you can move them to the next point of being enthusiastic about this, uh, sometimes you actually find most people who get converted from their different fields into actually getting into the next uh, vein of that set I showed you earlier. Uh, most people get so enthusiastic, and these enthusiastic ones are the ones you can actually get to become your security ambassadors, your security representatives in the different teams because you can't be everywhere at the same time. We all know that to every 100 staff, you probably get one security person in every organization and that's like, sometimes it's a lot more than that. So you build out your security program so that you can identify people who are actually getting it, who are liking it, uh, like uh, McDonald's, I'm loving it. If they're loving it, then, you know, give them a flag, you know, give them a pen, recognize them in the email newsletter, oh, this person is the best person, this, you know, it gets people talking and, you know, spread that buzz. So that's like, once you get them in the enthusiastic place, good. All right, we move to the team level. Remember, this is your technical staff, developers, security guys, operations teams, security administrators, middle management, you want to make sure that your security program for these guys is structured, right? Uh, keep it not too short. Uh, if you noticed in the previous program, I was like, you know, you need to keep this one short for the individual level. Uh, but when you go into uh, your core team, you need to keep it more structured. You need to like uh, create training programs for them, probably create everyone learns differently, so you need to understand how they learn best. How do you like to learn? I'll spend a bit of time around here because this is where I fit in. Uh, so you need to like get into people's curiosity, right? They are here now, they were probably enthusiastic or maybe they studied IT. This, this is someone you've uh, you know, brought into the company to keep your company secure. Why don't you get them registered for some trainings, right? Let them know that we have a security program in the next five years, you're going to go from probably having no security certification to becoming a pro, CCIE, CISSP. You need to, people need to see where they're going. Where does this lead me, right? Uh, if I start climbing on this ladder, where is it gonna take me and how long is it gonna take me to get there? And when they get into the company and they can see, oh, this person has been here for two years, he is now this. That's them in the next two years. So they want to be able to understand that for them. So you need to like get them from curiosity to competency. And uh, until they have enough competency, they really can't get to the point of creativity because you can't create if you don't. It takes a lot of time to learn how to actually, to learn this craft, right? So it's until you understand the craft before you can actually become creative. And for these guys, you probably want to like, you know, organize game days, uh, organize customizable content for them. People are traveling, uh, I live in London, and sometimes your commute is about one hour, two hours. You want to use that commute time to be useful for them 
So if you subscribe people to say LinkedIn Learning, Linda.com, Plural Sites, O'Reilly, they can watch these things on their phone, right? While they are commuting, they can listen on to it. You know, sign them up. It's, it's uh, quite cheap these days. Uh, get them signed up, customize this content for them. Uh, just keep it structured for you know, your core team. Keep that structured. Uh, Confucius said, if I hear, I forget. If I see, I remember. But if I do, I understand, right? We're still focusing on the core team here. How do they learn? People have been learning almost all their life. Nobody came out walking or running, you know. We also said by even not crawling, then you learn to crawl, then you learn to read. People have been learning. So why do we get into the workplace and we stop learning? It's probably because learning in the workplace is different from what people are used to, right? It sounds like work. So how do you get people to learn? bring them back to their childhood. How did they learn when they were children? They learned by participating, by playing, learning as a group. So don't just you know, keep people aside. We're going to send you for training somewhere. Keep them as a group, and then they can compare notes. They can talk about it. They can practice. So if you get people to actually learn in the way they love to learn, get them to learn by doing. This visual shows that only less than 20% of learning happens through audiovisuals, reading, or lectures. So you probably want to get them to the point of playing, exercising, discussing, demonstrating, you know, create hackathons where people can actually prepare so much so that they can actually demonstrate. Uh, so get people learning as they learn as children. And then you need to also let your core team understand that um, there's no individual who is greater than the sum, right? Uh, how do I how do say it? Sum, the sum of the parts and the whole. I can't, really, I can't remember how to put that. But uh, putting this in context is just to say that of the 11 players playing in a football pitch, uh, there's no one singular person. And I'd love to show you a video of uh, Maradona. You know, he's kind of football. You know, he dribbles everybody and he scores a goal. Unlike uh, Messi or Ronaldo, who actually plays as a team. So no single person is better than the whole team. So they need to like, learn to play with everybody. If you're good in this, you need to get your core team to the point of, oh, really? I'll just round up real quick. I thought I had three minutes. All right, uh, so I'll just talk about flow real quick. People get bored. People get anxious if they don't have the right experience. So what you want to do is to probably get them to the point of flow, as uh, Mihai Finchek Mihai talked about, get them to the point of flow, train people when they are anxious, bring them down, and uh, for people who are bored, they've been doing the same thing for the past 15 years, uh, change what they do or, you know, like, promote them or something and get them to the point of flow, build skills, and for the uh, senior team, you probably want to make sure you get metrics, KPIs, you've heard about this today, innovation actually happens from the top get information from the bottom, but you know, innovation starts from you, and candor, people can actually walk up to you, tell you about what they feel you can do for them, get that, and uh, build you know, training and uh, security into your culture. And I think that's about it from me. Uh, I'll leave you with that. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, that's uh, awareness, training, and education. October is our awareness month, so I hope we can all use that to introduce uh, security programs again, and uh, let's make security great again. Thank you.